Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome or PCOS is a term most of you must have heard already because it's very common nowadays. Most of the young girls and women are really scared to hear this term because they think it is a serious illness like some tumor in the ovary and that's going to ruin their fertility potential. As a matter of fact, polycystic ovarian syndrome is not that common. What is common is polycystic ovary. Now if we do ultrasound scan on every woman, perhaps in a class or you know in a college or in an office, we will find that 20%, like one out of five of these women, they have polycystic ovary. What is polycystic ovary? Poly means many and cystic means cyst-like. So it's not cyst, cystic is an adjective. So cyst-like structures around the ovary. So any woman who has many small egg follicles, like the follicles which contains the egg around the ovary, about eight, 10 or 12, and their ovaries are little swollen, little enlarged in size, that is called polycystic ovary. Now these women are more likely to have irregular periods and also some male features like loss of uh, hair, unnecessary hair growth in face, in chest, acne, oily skin and these are the features of excess androgen or the male hormone. Now when women they have these features in addition, there are some hormonal imbalance like high LH hormone, then we call them polycystic ovarian syndrome. So of all those women who have polycystic ovary, maybe out of 15 or 20, only one will have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, if you want to uh, research on this subject, it has been found that those people who have polycystic ovary are often have some genetic predisposition that means their mothers their grandparents the grandmother or maybe aunt they also have this problem and many members of their family also suffer from diabetes now diabetes is a problem where perhaps you know there's deficiency of insulin hormone in polycystic ovary there is no deficiency but there is an insulin resistance that means normal insulin in their body cannot work and because of that these women have carbohydrate imbalance so even if they eat very little they have a tendency of putting on weight so many of the women who suffer from polycystic ovary syndrome are also obese so one brings other it's like chicken and egg story polycystic ovary brings obesity and obesity brings more likelihood of developing polycystic ovary so many of these women have irregular periods and when they plan to have a baby they may need little help now please remember what i said i didn't say they suffer from infertility they would require little more help than others so there are lots of treatment now available but before going to the treatment the most important step for polycystic ovary is lifestyle modification now what we mean by lifestyle modification now at the current age we are living a very fast life. We have very little time for exercise. We have loads of junk food. We have loads of addiction. And we are working very long hours. And that is taking a toll on our body. So women who have polycystic ovary, they need to do regular exercise, at least one hour or maybe 45 minutes every day. And by exercise, I don't mean just walking. They mean brisk walking or running, jogging, swimming, cycling joining a gym so that they can lose calorie. Now, polycystic ovary syndrome settles on its own if women can lose 5 to 10 kilo of their body weight. We know it's difficult but it is possible. Many of our patients have lost more than 30 kilo weight just by doing exercise and change in their diet. Please note what I said. I didn't say dieting. I didn't say starving. I said change your diet. Avoid carbohydrate, avoid rice, avoid parathas, avoid roll and junk food. Now you can have it once in a while, you can have it once a month or maybe twice a month. But the other days you have lots of fruits and vegetables 
you can have fish, you can have chicken, try to avoid red meat. You can have milk products, you can have lentils, you can have all sorts of nuts, but have in moderation. So what we need to do, we need to have several meals every day, not like a small breakfast, a huge lunch and a big dinner, not like that. We have a big breakfast around 7 o'clock, then maybe at 10, little snack, maybe at 1 o'clock, very light lunch, around 4 o'clock, again little snack, and your dinner should also be light at, at 7 o'clock. You should not eat a heavy meal at least 3 hours before going to bed, and if possible, have a walk. You know, we say walk a mile after the dinner, so at least walk for a little while, if that's possible. If you can't go out, walk on your treadmill and have little little drink like milk or something like that at bedtime if you maybe hot chocolate if you really feel hungry so your major meal should be the morning when you have sun because our metabolism is determined by the sunlight so in the morning have a big breakfast because you have been fasting for last eight hours when you are sleeping and then gradually your meal should be coming down have lots of salads have yogurt have lots of fluid we should have at least three to four liters of water so before every meal you should have one liter of water so before breakfast so when you have such large amount of water your stomach cannot have any food so it's your it's your thought process which determines i usually keep a small plate on my in my clinic to show what should be the plate size of your food it's not a big dinner plate but have a small amount of food repeatedly if you feel very hungry have a fruit have an apple few nuts like that so i spent such a long time in talking about diet for polycystic ovary syndrome and exercise because that is going to give you lifelong treatment otherwise there are many medicines which we can prescribe of course we have had several success stories with the help of medical treatment with the help of surgical treatment but let's not talk about that let's change our lifestyle and we can actually take care of polycystic ovarian syndrome and i repeat once again polycystic ovary is not an illness polycystic ovarian syndrome is an illness we can treat that syndrome but we cannot remove polycystic ovary forever now many, many parents come to us and they ask doctor do something so that this problem is cured for life and i say look this is like some people are born with curly hair and some have straight now having a curly hair is not an illness some people have the eye color green or yellow but majority of us have brown or black now so some women are born with polycystic ovary and that is a condition they are born with it is like your skin complexion it is like your hair pattern that we cannot change but these women are more prone to all this problem that's what we can control by controlling the lifestyle we can treat the illness but we cannot remove the polycystic ovary there is no point doing repeated ultrasound scan to find out whether your ovary still have those small cysts or not the good news about polycystic ovary is these women are actually positive in many sides they are usually very successful in life do you know why because they have little bit more androgen in their system you know we say some girls are tomboyish that means you know they can fight they can debate they can bring any uh, you know bring sort of uh, positive arguments and these people are more successful academically and they are more successful professionally because so polycystic ovary is not a bad news it is actually a success story so those women who have polycystic ovary not necessarily they should get depressed but they have a different lifestyle in comparison to those without polycystic ovary so I would like to leave with this message is having polycystic ovary is not a worry you cannot change it but you can avoid bringing the problem of polycystic ovarian syndrome which actually is not a good news because not only you have gynecological problem but eventually in late life you can have diabetes you can have hypertension and there are also more likelihood of having uterine cancer because of the hormonal imbalance but all these problems I've said are preventable. So it is up to you. You decide whether you want to avoid this. And believe me, you don't have to go to a doctor. You can cure it yourself by reducing your body weight and by changing a healthy 
lifestyle and a healthy diet. I'm sure you can do it because it is not difficult. Many of our patients have done it and I'm sure many, many other women will follow them.